Essentially, we strike Iran, which would... War. Yeah, it is war. Yeah. People are already panicking. There's flames going up in the streets. He's just one guy, and we're talking about thousands of Americans being blown up. Our response to crisis is in some ways more important than the crisis itself, particularly against a context of tremendous fear. Reports are streaming in that only minutes ago, a large-scale explosion erupted somewhere in Baltimore. We're joined now by Jeff Reed. Yes, yeah, I, I, I'm, at, I'm at the port of Baltimore. A big, se a big section of the shipyards just went up in flames. People are running everywhere. A lot of people are dead. A lot of people are injured. Okay, so just to clarify, uh, we had an explosion in Baltimore in the shipyards. Uh, shipyards are on fire. It could have been an airplane or a helicopter. Um, also, Iran has mounted some troops in Syria. Um, Israel is thinking that they're going to invade, um, and a war could ensue between the nations. The simulation exercises that I will be conducting has an interesting history. I conducted them while I was serving in the Israel Defense Forces. The scenarios that we have absolutely are realistic and reflect contemporary um, terrorism simulations and, and scenarios. One of the major issues that we have right now is how to treat our detainees, the people that we have, how to treat them as far as interrogation right. techniques. The entire production team, including the students, includes 60 people. We have the virtual participants from the National Defense University. We have experts from Salt Lake City who will be, in many ways, role-playing themselves. We have a sheriff, we have U.S. attorneys, we have a policeman, we have the reporter. So we knew that going in, that whatever we had scripted, uh, that was just sort of an outline. And the students would really carry the simulation and that we would need to be able to adapt to those kind of things on the fly. And what you're doing is you're tying my hands. You're not, you're not letting me follow this up. Sir, I mean, we've got thousands of American lives here. And I'm telling you, it'll take four minutes and we can get some information from this guy. In addition, we have our audience. And our audience plays the role of asking questions, blogging, commenting, viewing, and participating, albeit from a distant virtual location. That's one of the unique aspects of this, is that somebody sitting wherever can ask us questions and can, we'll get online information, responses. So the point really is to make this as, as integrated as possible. Anybody who can, we have another video update. So There's been an attack in New York. Mr. President, today, every single What's time immediate? we've had a threat, the threat has been delivered upon. We need to decide what we can do about that threat. I think it helps prepare you for the fact that you're never going to have enough evidence, you're never going to have enough information, but you're going to have to make arguments, you're going to have to make decisions based on what you're presented with. I would like to think that everybody now has a better idea of what it is, how hard it is to make decisions. So it looks easy, it looks effortless, but in real life, man, it's hard. We hope that students will gain an experience that sophisticate them about the difficulty of making such experience. And as they go into their professional lives, whether it's in counterterrorism or other fields, that they bring the emotional resources and the intellectual resources that they gain from this information to those however different crises. My take on this at all times is next year needs to be bigger, better, more exciting than this year, fully with the understanding that we really are the nation's leaders in this field.